Am I on? I am, all right, great. Um, you know, I'm coming here today was, it, it was an awakening of my own journey, like where I started. So I think this is gonna be like, a, I'll, I'll try to condense this because right now I'm feeling so full because really like where my journey in behavioral change, leadership, mentorship began, is it began in conversation. Um, and, and, and I started to see that conversation is, is such a tool for mind shift. And if you think about it, like the things that we believe, we talked about them, we heard about them, we discussed them. And every time you're sitting in a conversation, there's gonna be opening up of perspectives and we kind of run with beliefs based on what we've heard um, and what we've heard repeatedly. Um, so when I think about the whole aspect of, um, you know, what digitalization means for where we're going, um, and I think about my own journey, I think that uh, we need to pay attention. Uh, for me personally, adaptation to the digital space was hard because, believe it or not, like, the most sentimental thing I could ever get is a handwritten letter. And, um, and I, I, I struggled with the lack of human contact during the COVID times. Um, I struggled having church online, but at some point, like the thing about change is we have to recognize that it's happened, it's hard, but we are quick to adapt to it. Um, so I'm, I am really like introducing a number of different concepts, the first being the importance of conversation. So a hub like this is going to be very critical in awakening minds, our minds and being conscious of really like what's happening within our ecosystem. And I talked to you about this whole idea of change, right? Um, and how change happens to us, whether we're ready or not. But at some point we have to acknowledge that change is happening, we have to accept it, and we pretty much have to align to it. Um, part of my leadership journey was a great opportunity for me to study adaptive leadership, which is the art and practice of leadership at the Kennedy School, um, Harvard Kennedy School. And that gave me such a rich opportunity. As you know, Harvard is like the center of studying real life cases. Um, and, and this whole experience opened up my mind while I was trying to adapt to the whole digitalization. My Harvard journey began in 2020 and it was a great opportunity to uh, um, introduce me to the complexities of change, but also allow me to start to think about what safety looks like during times of change. I mean, we talk about um, resistance to change, right? And like, do people resist change and maybe they do maybe they don't because if you get a new job opportunity it's a change that you're willing to you know step up to you get married you get a promotion whatever it is and so we we kind of figure that people don't resist change but what they resist is loss and um, so the whole aspect of adapting to change means that we need to think about creating safe environments that help people through change and um, so behavioral change for me has been about, okay, if we're asking people to make changes, have we created the environments that allow for this kind of change? What are we really asking people to give up um, and let go of? And then finally, um, my highlight, which I left to the, to the end, is mentorship. My tagline is that mentorship matters. I, I live, breathe, eat, sleep, feel <laughs> mentorship. <laughs> Um, a mentorship is influence and long before I embarked in my professional career and part of which really is pastoring as well um, and I don't know how many of us have watched the series Designated Survivor. Did you watch that, right? And so I thought it was like one of those clean Netflix um, <laughs> um, shows uh, but then of course a few series down you're like, oh, you know, there's the plot again. Um, but I was really designated survivor in pastoral work because I lost my husband in 2019. And I came from being a Maibusa to being, you know, like a Busa. And, and I had to think about um, all of these different concepts in terms of helping people progress through life. And I think mentorship has been an anchor for me because it's, 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 um, it's an active force for influence. Like we, when I started my mentorship journey, and I'm gonna wrap this up now, when I started my mentorship journey, 
um, I remember being in a community of young people and the big conversation was like, do you want to get mentored or not? Are you going to do this Pastor Gladys thing or not, you know? Um, and some people kind of felt like, you know, mentorship is not really my thing because I don't really want people talking to me about what I should do. And of course, there's a lot of misconceptions around mentorship, right? But I think that even for those who decided that mentorship was not their thing, didn't realize that they were actually being informally mentored. Because mentorship is influence, is that informal learning. It's the, it's the influence that, that we receive on a day-to-day -day basis and we run with. So mentorship um, as, as a um, gift, is just about being very intentional about who influences your life. And I want to just wrap up by saying that as we come into the space of progression and moving forward as startups and looking at where we want to get to, um, perhaps we need to consider mentorship. We need to think about like who's supporting your process, who, who has already paid the price that maybe you don't have to pay? You know, who, who is it that um, is going to tell you where it hurts so it doesn't have to hurt you or where the band-aid is? Um, and I think just mentorship is just the easiest way to do life, to grow and, you know, to just learn life so it doesn't teach you a lesson. I'll speak to one of the programs that we run at, at Bongo Hive called the Standard Chartered Women in Tech program. So during this Women in Tech program, uh, we had different women entrepreneurs who have traditional businesses and they wanted to use technology in their businesses. So what happened is we used to pair them with different mentors and, and the mentorship would be monitored basically. So some of the challenges we faced when pairing a mentor with a mentee is not finding that right fit. You see a mentor and you see a mentee, you pair them together, but once they've met, they're not really achieving their objectives because they're not a good fit. So most of the times, it's rare to find a good fit in terms of a mentor and mentee relationship. But once you've got it and once the fit has just been found, I feel like uh, it's, it, mentorship is such an important thing. And I like what Dr. Gladys shared about informal mentorship. I personally have benefited from informal mentorship. I don't have any older mentors, but I tend to listen from my peers, like people who have more experience in the field of innovation and technology. And some of them are right here in the audience, Nomsa. And um, it's, it's been a pleasure just listening to your peers because your peer can also mentor you. They can also share value and sentiments. Well, uh, in our sector, we have a lot of women doing the primary production. So 90% are women. They are doing the primary production. But the men are the people who take the products to the market. They are the decision makers. So when you even talk about things like mentorship, as a woman, obviously, because agriculture in Zambia is still a traditional practice. So when you bring products to Mulimi or to Zindaba, you bring something. I will first go to my husband because remember, it's the women that are doing the production. So even if you design products for the women, they will still go to their husbands to go and get consent because that's the reality. So we really still need, even when we're talking about mentorship, we need to look at mentorship that is gender inclusive, speaks to the needs of the women. A very good example is, you know, we, we hear talks of, I don't want to employ women because women are always sick, the child is sick, they will not show up for work. Mother's Day. <laughs> Which is very true because we have more things to fight than the men. We love you men, but we are fighting a bit more battles and already society doesn't make life easier for us because we have been given this stereotype that women are not doing so well. So we need to look at programs, in, especially when you talk about mentorship, that are gender inclusive and also uh, that, that are going to be speaking to the needs of the women. Because in our sector, when, like I said, we have specific needs. I think one, one of the biggest uh, crops that I've worked with is groundnuts. So we have these whole stereotypes that groundnuts uh, should be grown by the women. It's women to do all the production. But when it's time to sell, our husbands are there to pick up our crops and take them to Baoleni market. Yes. So it's, it's, we have a lot of work when we're talking about mentorship and we're we need to design projects and design programs that will speak to the women. 
speak to their needs because we have extra work to do. Uh, what we do is we help uh, smallholder and emerging farmers access financing. We help them access insurance. We also, I see some mulimis in the house. <laughs> yeah, we also do help them with extension service and access to markets. So we've been in existence, I think, formally for like five years now. And we have had a lot of success stories, which I am so proud. We have seen a lot of women get involved in agriculture. And the narrative is changing because the women now are the decision makers. Women are keeping records. So for me, that is a win and it's a plus. Yeah, that is what we do as Mulimi. But yeah, what are some of the key lessons and some of, if any mistakes, I know there have been a lot of them, but what are some of them that you can say, look, I made this mistake, this is what I learned, and I'm hoping that you don't have to do the same? Um, firstly, number one, I, I was an anti-mentorship person because I had this idea that if I share my idea, people will steal it. I had this big dream. I wanted to be Zanako's competitor like in the first year. That was my dream. So when I started my business, I was so focused on just doing things the way I thought they should be done without really consulting and investing in doing research, creating systems. So I ran my business for a very long time without systems. And then on social media, my business was, wow, oh my God, Mulimi is everywhere. It's big. But then in actual sense, my business was not making money. We were barely surviving. So one thing that I really didn't look at as a woman in business was creating systems for myself, for my business. And then when I look back, I, I was really just, it was just a journey. It was, not, it was a nice hobby that was making me look good. Mm -hmm. But then I made an international decision to say, you know what, I need to find people that I can talk to that have gone before me. People that are experts like Aline is here. She's an example, hey. <laughs> She's an example of the people that have been holding my hand to help me make the right decisions. And then the other thing is I didn't have the right partners for my business. I was really focused on getting people that were out there because they had a name. They were known to the public that, you know what, so-and-so is in the agriculture space. They've been in it for so long, so they'll be able to help my business grow. 90% of the time, they were never available for me. But then at the end of the year, when it's time to share the money, they are there. Then you start thinking to yourself, okay, what am I doing? It's like I'm working for people without really seeing the value. So finding the right fit, the right partner for me is something that you really have to consider as a small business owner, especially in your startup phase. Because if you don't, you, it will either make or break you. The right partner is somebody that will go out there and speak about your brand. They will tell everybody about what you do. Um, I'll give an example. My business partner, one of my business partners, her name is Chico Borero. She lives in uh, South Africa. She's not in Zambia, but I think she's our biggest sponsor. She's always speaking Mulimi. She's always talking about our organization. We've gotten funding because of her, because she's always there. She's, she will have meetings at 02. Then we're realizing, oh my goodness, it's 02. It's time to sleep. So you really need to find the right partner, because then if you do not, it will not help your business grow. So that is really, really important. And then lastly, you shouldn't uh, be scared to change. Change is something that will come. You have this idea that Mulimi will become a financial institution today, tomorrow. But as you go, you learn that Bank of Zambia, the fees, whoosh, for a small business, they are high. How best can you go around it? What can you do to be able to still offer the same service that you would like to do, which is to transform the agriculture sector, offer these offerings to the smallholder farmers? So be gentle with yourself. Don't be too rigid because I know we have this beautiful business plan. We've written it down on paper. It makes sense. But then when it's time for you to bend a little, bend a little. It won't hurt because then you will be able to become a bit more resilient and understand where you're supposed to go as a business owner. So those are the three, one, three main ones I would like to share. Awesome. Thank you. Gladys, I, I, I know you, you have something to, to add to that because we did speak about the importance of process and the importance of structure. Is that something that you, you would like to comment on? Um, I think uh, Rhoda nailed it, you know, just when, you, when she spoke about, you know, the importance of finding the right fit and just the complexities of 
um, finding value in that mentor-mentee relationship, right? How do you know this is the mentor for me, the person who, because there must be chemistry, right? Um, and, and, and the thing with them, um, when you do think about like, who is going to walk this journey with you, I think that it's not so much a, a technical exercise. I think it's more of a recognition. And, and in the spirit of Women's, uh, um, women's Month, um, it's, uh, it's what's unique about a woman is that we carry, we carry each other's stories within us. You know, and I think it's where our compassion comes from. When we are hearing another woman's story, we, 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 have a, we see a part of our story in her. Um, and so when you're able to now recognize that person that has something for you, it's, it's a science, you know, it's, you, you recognize it, you, you say this person speaks to my heart. It's why we listen to certain speakers and not others. It's why we have favorite musicians and favorite preachers, because I think that within us, there's a potential calling out to recognize um, value that someone else is carrying for us. And I think that you really have to trust your, your spirit man. And I can take you to church <laughs> for a bit, but you really have to trust your spirit, man. Really trust your inner voice that is saying to you that I, there's something there for me. And I think that's where process really begins to unfold because, um, and, and I know, like, what, one of the things that we did talk about, Jan, even before this, um, you know, before we got settled, was this um, problem where when we get started, we kind of hit this plateau. You know, we, we, we feel like I'm stagnant um, and I don't seem to be making the right progress. We feel unsettled because within us, again, that consciousness that there must be more um, is something that we can't ignore. So I think when it comes to, to, to process, you're going to benefit a lot from someone who's gone ahead of you because, you know, it's like, it's like a recipe. You can get a recipe book and try to figure it out, like, what is a large sunrise egg? You can have someone say to you, don't bother about the sunrise. This egg will do. And so that's what makes life a lot easier. When you have someone doing process with you, um, if we were to convert ourselves into cakes, and we, we come out of that state where we are clear ingredients, Right? You get what I'm saying? I'm just using an analogy. Um, in the baking process, if we've got ingredients, the sugar, the eggs, the flour, we are good because we know what the elements are. But at some point, those elements lose identity. And so what is this mixture now? Right? And I hope I haven't lost the men. <laughs> right? You've baked cakes before, right? What's this mixture? Like, if you eat it, it will make you sick. You completely lose identity, but... You need a mentor to tell you that this is part of the process. You know, the beating is not there to destroy you, but it's actually giving you texture. And when you get into the oven, the, this, this, um, you've come into a productive range of stress. You know, there's a level of resilience that you can now begin to build. Because perhaps you thought, you know what, you could never manage the size of your business, or you could never break or go past certain boundaries. And that's what that oven experience is like. You're building resi resilience. And you need the resilience to be able to do more business and to be able to take more challenges. Um, and so really, like, um, you need a walk through that process before you are adorned and, and everybody's clapping, whether we are clapping um, over an image or over substance, I think, is, is a whole discussion on its, on its own. But yeah, process is going to be key if we are going to make progress. <laughs> process is going to be key if we're going to make progress um, I'm definitely writing that down and w as you were talking I was literally imagining a, a cake in, in the oven and so when the heat is being applied the one thing that happens is it begins to rise and, <laughs> and I think that's something that you know we should definitely take away it's the heat that, def that will make us rise and make us ready for the next step um, so thank you. Thank you so much for that. So Rhoda, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. Um, we've talked a lot about mentorship. We've talked a lot about how we can learn from other people's stories and experiences. 
how process is important and how structure is important. Um, I, having worked in, in, in a hub where you saw entrepreneurs and innovators and startup founders walking in every day, what are some of those challenges that you could possibly uh, speak to that you have seen in your experience and how can some of these challenges be, you know, how, how can people overcome those challenges? Thank you for your question. I think one of the challenges has already been mentioned by Zindava when she spoke about how um, startups, okay, basically startups have ideas, right? And they, they hold them back and say, okay, this is my idea. I don't want anybody else to hear it. But when you're a trainer, you want to hear every part of the business because you want to advise appropriately. So these are some of the challenges we used to face. Startups holding back their ideas and most of the time it's the women startups unfortunately who don't want to share the idea. You find that she has a great idea, a fintech company. Um, I was just sharing with the fellow panelists before that we have seen uh, startup competitions where a woman is pitching on her fintech, a man is also pitching on his fintech but the woman doesn't get in and the man gets in. Why? Because the delivery, the trainer was the same, I'm the same trainer, I trained them, but the delivery, the woman holds back on her idea and doesn't bring it out with as much passion as the man. So in the end, it's like, what can we do to help these women to really let go and, you know, shine? Because sometimes we just always like to take the back seat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we do. I, I am certainly a culprit of wanting to, to take the back seat. I was telling the panelists, I think they have been doing this for a couple of years and this is my first event and I said, oh, guys, <laughs> I, I would really much rather be at the back of the room <laughs> clapping for everybody else at the front. Um, we do not like to shine sometimes and that's where we were talking about how it's important to, if there are certain skills, to identify some of the skills that you probably need in order for you to get to where you need to go. Uh, you spoke of, of Toastmasters as a possibility for somebody who may not be able to have the confidence to stand in front of a couple of people and pitch their idea. And sometimes that could be the one thing that is standing in between you and your next investment and your next investor and your next big, big step. Um, we, one of the other programs that I run with is, uh, is Founders Boost, which is a pre-accelerator program. And what we do at, uh, at Founders Boost, it, it's basically a six-week program um, that enables startups to go through a mentor-led session um, where they, you know, we would discuss everything from pitching to uh, how do you approach investors, how do you design your pitch deck and things like that. And it's mentor-led, so people sign up as mentors and they take them through that six weeks. And sometimes you realize that really we, we hold back on so many things and um, some, sometimes it might just be because of your personality. So maybe you are, you, you are an introvert and it's not, it's, not, it's not in your comfort zone to stand in front of people and tell them, look, I need money for this big idea. That, and that's really all you need. Um, but once you identify that this is a skill that I have to acquire, you can then find programs or people that might be able to help you. So it could either be Toastmasters to enable you to speak a little bit more confidently about the knowledge which you obviously have. Um, or it could be getting into a mentorship program, or it could be going to a hub like Nyamuk Africa or Bongo Hive. There are people there that are willing to help, and they have, you know, they've done it for so many other people. There's nothing to stop them for do, to, for, for doing it, uh, from doing it for you. Yeah, so, okay. yeah because I think, so I, I'm thinking, right, like um, all these perspectives on us as women, right, uh, you should lead us to a place of curiosity um, because we're living at a time now where of course so much has changed digitalization on its own has like invaded our space and changed so many things um, so it means that we have to go through life as learners of life right and 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 then we have to become curious like are we really introverts are we really does do women really take the back seats because there are times where we manifest ourselves, right? And, and it happens when we care about something. You know, I, I was sharing on a program, but I won't belabor you with the story where I found myself, um, you know, exposing a persona that I didn't know I possessed 
because I felt like my child was in danger. So I think within us, we are innovators. We are courageous. We, we are um, willing to step out of our comfort zone. We're women. It's what we do every day. So what we now need to do is to begin to learn what is it that we are resisting. And then that's the work. That's where we need to start problem solving and addressing. Um, j just to add my two cents on this uh, subject, on holding back, I think this could be a subject on its own on another day. Um, to add on to what, what she mentioned, you know, holding back, I think it has a lot to do with our systems, where we're coming from, our school structures, and, how, and what we are exposed to you will appreciate that, you know, a lot of children in schools do not really get the platforms where they have conversations, where they have to talk about their fears, where they have to talk about their strengths, and what they can do. We all get to start learning all these things when you have actually gone through the university. And, you know, it's so much time lost. We go through a lot and life conditions us to certain things and, you know, just for you to recover and start building the courage to start facing, you know, the, the, the different sectors or the different sections of society and express yourself, it becomes a challenge. So I wish such programs could really be extended to schools. You engage, you know, the, the, the young people at a much, much earlier stage. I think uh, that would that would really make uh, the difference. That, that that is an that is an awesome idea. I'm I'm very passionate about education and about enabling young people to optimize and reach their full potential. It's definitely something that we should <laughs> we should take note of uh, as Nyamuka Africa and see how we can get into schools and have such conversations with them so that it's not something that just hits you when you're older that you know this is something like you know i could actually do this yeah so thank you so much for that um i could ask if there's anybody else would like to weigh in on the conversation at this point um thank you for for opening that up Agatha, right? awesome i remember names sometimes <laughs>
for me, I am a strong believer of partnerships. And when we talk about all these wonderful things we're talking about, I work with farmers in the rural areas. They will never get an opportunity to come to Zanako. They will never get an opportunity to talk to a person like Pastor Gladys. But then the issue is the few of us who are out there, who are out here gathering this information, when we go back to our communities, it is our duty to share what we've learned. Because if we don't, Zambia agriculture will always be a cultural practice it will still remain the same way. You will bring the best technology. I've seen wonderful technology innovations brought on the market, but there's no uptake. Reason being, we are creating products for the people that it's not intended for. The actual users are out there. So it's all about partnerships. I know of a lot of organizations who are in the community, but never get an opportunity to actually be able to sit in such conversations and share their two cents. So, Partnerships is very, very important for progress of my sector. <laughs> we need as many partnerships as possible. Yes. So partnerships, there are a lot of opportunities in the room here for, for partnerships. And um, obviously, if you know somebody that needs, um, you know, that needs to engage or network or connect with anybody, even just here, Partnerships are important, and it's all about who you know. Whether we, whether we like it or not, we get, we've gotten to a point in our lives where um, your network really is your net worth, and we have to be intentional about our networking, about creating connections with people. So I'm hoping that everybody seated here has made a friend with the person that's <laughs> sitting next to them. You don't know if... <laughs> I hope you have. You, you, you should at least know the name of the person you're sitting next to. And I'm hoping you didn't come with them. <laughs> because they could be your next big step, you know? Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's important. And, and you know, real quick, I think this is why we mustn't think about um, mentorship, leadership. We must not think about it as this big, flashy title. It's work. We do the work of mentorship, we do the work of leadership, and it's available to anybody who's willing to help others make progress. So we're somebody's mentor, like each and every one of us. We're, we're here to influence someone else, and like Zindaba says, wherever we are found, right, is it, who do I have access to? And will I allow my voice to be like that voice of an awakening of some woman or man's dream? Thank you. Do we have any other questions from the audience or comments? Zindaba, right? Mentioned uh, about partnerships. Personally, I'm from the agriculture sector as well. Then, um, yes, we have uh, very good solutions that are really meant for that sector. But the uptake is very low. Maybe it could be the reason she mentioned, because we're not really maybe... Um, there's no sensitization with the small scale farmers that we are, pro we are trying to solve for. So I find that uh, uptake actually is mostly with the commercial farmers, of which they are minimal in the country. Then um, a question, I don't know how uh, women feel, but I've uh, kind of found that actually women are very good innovators. And um, in our team, actually, we have women. And uh, the feeling of uh, holding back I it's uh, very much in them because I've noticed in most cases uh, one of our founder, co-founders actually should want to bring out something but uh, because she holds back it doesn't come out clear and uh, for example if we were pitching would find out that actually the point she was trying to raise is one point that we are actually um, given to say you should consider working around it. So I don't know what uh, makes that, but uh, if there would be a way in which it could be worked around with, uh, women are very good innovators. <laughs> I think you really touched home when you said, uh, I've worked with so many entrepreneurs, not much experience, only two years, but now I'm at Zanako doing innovation. So, so one would think, oh, she's made it. 
I still don't feel like I have made it. There's still more to life. I'm not uh, shading my bank, but <laughs> yes, all I'm saying is there's there's always something to look forward to. Even if tomorrow I went to a Silicon Valley, I feel like I would still want to continue working with entrepreneurs. So I think it's mostly for me, it's the passion that I've developed around my work. There's a quote by Jake Knapp that says, if you have... Um, you go to work every day, right? Basically what he was saying is you go to work every day and if you're able to find a passion in the work that you do, that means something very valuable because it will not feel like a job. So for me, innovation has grown. It's, it's become something that's passionate to see and hear the impact stories of these different startups I've worked with over the years. Saying So it's, I think I really want to say, find your fuel in your motive, but also preserve that fuel, preserve that motive to make sure you're keeping it pure in a world where there are so many other options, in a world where you're going to be disappointed and that motive is going to be contaminated. Keep it um, pure and your fuel will be clean to keep you moving. Thank you. That's been amazing. Thank you very I much. I think we Thank answered you. his question. Um, we? No, there was a question he asked towards the end about how we can help um, women to, is it speak up? Because you said women are innovative, women are innovators, but there is that holding back. So um, are we able to advise, is there something he can take away or help his co-founders um, when it comes to holding back? Also, you can identify women that have gone before her that are able to hold her hand. Like I have Aliness, she's always telling me, Zindi, relax, you're not ready for that kind of funding. I know you want the million dollars. Relax, relax. So find people that are also able to hold her hand. Pieces. You know, because sometimes you'll hear someone who'll say, this is the thing that worked for me, and I became this driven, confident woman. Um, but the thing that worked for me was addressing my losses, my injuries, my limitations. So I think there's so many different moving pieces. Is it, is it capacity building and development? Is it, like, um, is it like pushing somebody past their boundaries, you know, the edge off the cliff so that you show them that they can fly? Or is it creating safety for them to be able to do uh, what they need to do. So I think it's, it comes out in conversation, it comes out in safe spaces, and yeah, in just providing the support, and we, we learn what the problem is and provide the right solution. Thank you. So I think that the, the answer is there's no, there's no straight way of saying this is how you're going to get <laughs> them to come out of their shell and do it, um, but it's important to understand where they're coming from and to address the actual issue that they may be facing. So thank you so much for your question and thank you for your responses, ladies. I'm going to ask if there's, oh yes, Ida. So uh, you mentioned about motives and I have come to learn and appreciate the fact that every day when I wake up to go and clean someone's house, it's not easy, it's not easy. And the only thing that ever gets me up at four and prepare my, my bag, my chemicals, is the fact that I always look forward to seeing a very clean house. And the, that's the ever excitement. Because half the time, days are really hard. <laughs> I would love to, honestly. Half the time, uh, work itself is very hard. But because I love to clean, and luckily I have part of my team who love to clean, so it's something that we even look forward to. We're like, oh, madam, we don't have any work for us this weekend. I'm like... Girl, come on, we're going this side. So I think passion largely does play an important role in whatever you try to do and just being very intentional about it. And um, to speak about, uh, talk about speaking up like for yourself and being audible enough. Personally, I feel like we rush for so many things that we know we don't need. Like I had my stage where I don't really need the funding because I know that my business is at the level whereby it doesn't need funding. What it needs is to, if I can say, to establish itself, like be at a certain space, then source for funding. What I need right now are things like uh, 
Yamoka books <laughs> to learn my accounting system. Mm -hmm. I need wise people like you to speak to me and tell me where you have been and how you did overcome a couple of things that I'm actually going through. And I feel like that's something that's going to help us build a strong system. Such that to a point where our founder's booster comes in, we should be ready and fit enough to um, scale up. So, yeah, these are great conversations. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. A hand for Ida. Ida is, um, for if, if you didn't get it from what she said, she's the founder of Door to Door Perfect Polish. And they, maybe you can just give us a bit of some highlights about what you do. Thank you. Uh, I am the, um, not really founder, mm -hmm. but I am the chief visionary officer for Door to Door because I carry the vision for where I want the company to go to, to get to rather. And we provide professional cleaning services. We have uh, a, mo a mobile maid program that is so great and I wish all of you could get on it. You can get a maid closest to you. How fun is that? So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to get to pay someone coming from Delhi when you're staying in Avondale to come and service your house. And our team is so good. So we provide professional cleaning services and we love to clean. Awesome. I think that's it about us. <laughs> that's the future. But for now, we are, we are so available. So fast, when you text us on WhatsApp, we should allocate someone to you closest. Thank you. So technology is going to come in like, <laughs> yes, at a higher yes. level. I don't yes. want up this technology, but yeah, we're going to bring in apps and whatnot. It'll be amazing. <laughs>
um, with I think QTV and I was saying that um, I was actually highlighting what Miles Monroe said. He said there is one place where you find there is only one place where you find the wealthiest uh, spot and uh, he said it's actually the grave because there you find uh, business ideas that even up to today would have actually changed the face of the world business plans that would have actually you know changed people's situations idea uh, uh, books that should have actually changed somebody and changed them so find somebody that you know can help you best express yourself because we always learn from you know from what other people have done before find somebody that you you can confide in somebody that can help you you know to bring out those points somebody that you can stand with if at all you feel like you no know, that the imposter syndrome is coming in you quickly you know tell them to say i'm at this position what can i do because that idea is actually what everybody is actually you know waiting for is actually what the world actually needs so take it up yourself to just um uh work with what we have uh, uh discussed you know with all the wonderful people in here i think that would be it From my experience, we have advised startups to get a mentor as soon as, 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 as your business starts at idea stage. So there are three different stages. There's idea stage, there's small growing business, until you finally get to an SME and you're dealing with ventures and so on. So if you have someone advising your business at idea stage and they have experience, make sure that they have experience in that field, that it would be good for you to get a mentor uh, as early as possible. Yeah. I think I'll talk about the, the online mentors. In, in our industry, we have people doing awesome things on Facebook. And when you go to their farm, <laughs> you'll be like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? But then you, you as a young person, you started your business and you're thinking, I need to get this. I need to get a tractor like yesterday. I need to get to get a loan from Zanako so that I can upskill. People do not show you everything. So even as you select a mentor, you have to be very intentional because then at the end of the day, it's, it, what you see is not really what is there. I will show you a glamorous life. I, I, have, I now have a beautiful office <laughs> and it's like a corner office. So people are like, oh my God, the views. I hate it. I want to go back to the farm. And people are like, what is wrong with you? You finally got in a nice, beautiful office. So Everything, not everything you see is not really what is there. So be very intentional, especially in agriculture. We have big, big businesses on social media, but people are dying in debt. They have so much debt. People got a lot of money and they are failing to service because one, they do also do not have a product that's able to service the debt. There's nothing wrong with getting a loan, of, a loan for your business, but then it's being able to service it, service it. And with social media, we are getting mislaid every day especially as young people we see it and we're so excited i'm like okay aliness is a button mushroom farmer by the way i'm advertising you need to make me your brand ambassador <laughs> she the cost of putting up a button mushroom business is very high so you as a young person you see it and you're like i want to do it she's not showing everything she's been saving sorry sweetie she's been saving for so many years for her to be able to do that so you have to be very intentional and very careful with social media i do radio i do tv right communications is my space but that's not something that she was doing. She was, um, I believe she was, at the time when she started mentoring me, she was um, the chief operating officer at uh, Zam Safes and Alarms. She didn't look anything like where I wanted to go. And yet she had the exact thing that I needed to propel me into the industry. So I personally believe that when you are trying to identify a mentor, I think it's a spiritual journey that you need to take. Because a mentor, it's a relationship. Where, how far are they gonna take you? 
Because I always say, look at the person who mentors you. How, where are they going? And how far will they be able to take you? Yes, there, there are people who mentor you at different levels. And sometimes people will mentor you and address a particular area in your life. Where I was when I started, I needed every channel fixed. I needed my marriage fixed. I needed my personality fixed. I needed to know that I'm actually a good mom. I needed to know that, oh yeah, I can be a good wife and this is how I need to do it. Those are the things that for me to be allowed into a space where I can dominate, I needed to fix that first. So I feel like sometimes we're rushing to, I need to do this because everybody's doing it. Again, digital space, crooking us, making us feel like we are, we are behind, you know, when we're not, you know what I mean? So we are under pressure to be where she is. We're under pressure to be where she is. We're under pressure to be where she is. But you have your own personal journey that if you try to skip process, you are going to crash land bad. And you won't be able to recover from that. So I personally think, I'm sorry for bringing it to church, but it is a spiritual journey, even for your business, because your business serves people, and service is spiritual. So I work a lot with um, emerging businesses, uh, startups at ideation stage and you know small small businesses so I get to engage with people who want to do something with their peanuts something uh, some, some some women who want to to do something with the with the with the mushrooms they get from the bushes so we innovate a lot I do product development and it has been like she has said you cannot isolate your 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 business from your journey from your purpose you can't you need to find your purpose you need to identify yourself and that will be your fuel your number one motivation is your purpose you need to know yourself your wh why are you here if you're going to position yourself in this space what service are you bringing and that is where now spirituality comes in. You have to, to know that you cannot isolate your purpose from spirituality. You can't. Uh, secondly, on identifying uh, a mentor, try as much as possible to educate, to self-educate. Really, people, sometimes people don't just have the time and it might take you a long long time before you identify somebody who will speak to your inner man like pastor gladys said it is going to take you a lot of time so try to use you know the available tools as much as possible you know there's a lot of information on 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 on, on the digital spaces right now self-educate sign up for all these um uh, online courses, sign up for them, self-educate, get as much knowledge as possible, and, you know, learn from experiences. Yes, the, 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 the Facebook and, and all these spaces are flooding us with so much, you know, fake news and lifestyles, but you don't really need to, to, to get lost and detach yourself from the reality. If you're going to stay on course and you're going to appreciate what your purpose has to bring forth, you have to be in touch with reality. Take time. Go to Soweto Market. See how people live. Take time, you know, drive to Chongwe, Kafue. Be on the ground and just be in touch with reality. I think we also learn a lot from being in touch with reality. Turn off social media for some time and see how much, uh, you know, you will learn from, from interactions and just from being, with, uh, uh, from being around people. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What it has made me realize is that the startup journey, the business journey, whatever journey you're on, it's a human journey. And it, there's a human element to it, whether it's emotions, whether it's what you're going through, circumstances, there's a human element to it which cannot be ignored. And I, I think um, inadvertently, uh, the theme of this, <laughs> of our first startup conference has been mentorship. It has been, <laughs> you know, it has been people 
Um, but I think it's also critical that we start on this note because everything is going to be built from there. It's a great foundation. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you so much. Um, we will have just one, there's a lady at the back um, who, want, who had her hand up. You had your hand up? Go ahead, uh, you can pass her the mic. You need to have like someone to help you with the extra work that's coming. And that's the problem that I'm facing currently. I own a natural hair mobile salon and um, my salon is, has started getting known by people and appointments are coming in. But the problem I have is that I'm finding it a bit, I find it a bit hard to open my work to someone else because I'm like, are they going to treat my customers as well as I can treat them? Or are they going to do a perfect job? So I, my question goes to the panelists or anyone in here who has uh, a business. How did you open up to other people to, you know, yes, I think, yeah. That's a <laughs> Thank you so much. I didn't catch your name. It's Loveness. Thank you, Loveness. That's a very, very important question. And I was actually going to bring us back to also discuss a few other issues around innovation technology and startups. Please go ahead. Uh, oh, hi, my name is Susan Kapia. And I am from Zelu Plus, follow up tutor. Yes, so looking at your question, um, your business is sort of similar to what I do. So we link students to teachers within the same location using a mobile app. Yes, yeah, so what we do is I study it myself, where you teach, go uh, to people's houses, teach. But then the business became too big that like I couldn't be in one place, I mean, so many places. So I had to now engage other teachers to be part of me. So what I did is I had to train them. So in your situation, you can train the whoever that has to do your job on your behalf. Yeah, you train them, show them how you do, uh, how you do you use your product, and everything else. Because for me, what I do is I teach them on how they're supposed to teach. So, because there's mentorship that has to be involved. There's um, them having to talk to a child because you no know, one-on-one uh, learning is sort of very difficult to teach us on one-on-one because it's where most of the character is being reviewed. So we have mentors, psychologists that speak to our teachers even before they could conduct any lessons with the students uh, at their homes. So what you can do maybe right now is for you to just have a session where you talk to them, teach them how you use your product, teach them how you do your work, and customer service, I will be great for them as well. Thank you. Um, so I think to add to what you said, like creating systems for your business, I think will help in terms of like, like, like yeah, you have to train them obviously, but like there's one thing that I learned when, when, I worked at Bongo Hive. Um, the founder would would create a culture. The company culture was very much a thing of okay. When you join the the, the company, uh, you meet with the founder. Your line manager, whoever's above you, also has the same company culture. So whatever you're learning is because the founder said, okay, this is what we want you people to be like. We want you to be able to take responsibility for yourselves. We want you to be able to do your work on your own. We want you to be um, a, a responsible employee, you know. And I think that when you create a company culture that is saying, okay, this is what I want my company to be like. I don't want somebody to go out and they're doing someone's hair and they come back with complaints because you want, you want to create a company culture that people are, it's the same across the board. If they meet you, they've met, uh, if they've met an employee, they've met you basically like that. So create those types of systems where you're like, okay, sit down by yourself and say, what kind of culture do I want to create? You know, do I want people to complain? No, you don't. So, you know, you, you, t you do those things and you, um, when you're training them, build around that, like train them around those things. Um, and I think that that will help a lot. Would you like to weigh in on, on, on that? I think when we're advising a small business, myself being in your space before, it's difficult and it's scary because then you'll be like, oh my goodness, what if my employees start to say I will do the hair at 100 kwacha instead of 250? But then for growth to happen, it is something that you have to go through with. 
you need to be able to take that risk and say, you know what, I want my business to grow. I need it to grow. So I need to take this and be able to go through with it. So something I think for your business that you can do is maybe create reviews. So you could have your customers send in reviews of the person that wants to do the hair. Maybe the first session that you take them to the client, you could go with them so that you make them feel comfortable. Like in my business, we have what we call market days. You will find me in Soweto, in Bauleni, in Chilenge Market. Don't be deceived, I can't even do my nails. Yeah. <laughs> you will find me all dressed up in my gambos. I do not do that because I want to look cool. I want to be in touch with the reality. I want to see what my people are doing when they go out there representing my brand. Because at the end of the day, the employees will move on, but you will remain with your brand. And then building your name is something that is really difficult. When it's ruined, people will be like, ha, bamulimi ni bakawalala. They will tell you they will provide this for you, but they never really show up. So it's really, really, really important and it's profound, it's spiritual, like she said. You need to take that leap of faith and say, you know what, it's time for growth. Let me try and do it. I just have one comment that I think Nomsa also just touched on it. One thing we learned from Bongo Hive is they said always hire someone smarter than you. That's all. That's all. <laughs> I know um, growing a team or having a team that feeds into your vision is it's not always easy. Um, <laughs> and, but growing in general still does have to happen. So you have to take a leap of faith. Obviously, even as you're going through the process, you'll be looking for people that you can see, okay, these ones, you know, we, we, we are aligned. Or our, but that, again, doesn't mean that you will get everyone who just agrees with everything <laughs> that you're going to say. You know, it has to be a give or take, but it also has to be somebody that you can be confident enough to say, this person can carry my vision forward and we can work well together. And it's very tormenting because you sit there and you wonder, will my clients be satisfied? And you know, uh, some clients, like for me, I have personal relationships with some of them, and they marry my work to me. So for me, what I do is good enough for them. But when I send someone else to do it, they think it's below average. Like it's always there. Like they always have a complaint. No, she didn't, she didn't dust the table. She didn't clean the shoes. So I would suggest as you look for that person to help you out, you do what to look out for um, someone. Uh, do you do natural curls? So you can look for someone that already does something like that. Maybe you can even look for them from places where they are found. So that you get that personal touch. There are some people who are working very good, but they work in situations that they don't want to. Maybe you can offer them something better and just build a relationship. And I think it's easier when you build relationships. <laughs> but yeah, that's, those are my two. Thank you. Um, and I think we, we will be winding up. And, um, but the conversations can continue. They can continue on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, feel free. I do hope that they, people can connect with you if they are not already uh, connected. Um, but I'll just take maybe a round to just ask the ladies to share uh, a final thought, um, you know, about innovation, about technology, about women, and about how we can continue to create a supportive um, ecosystem for founders, entrepreneurs, and people who are building um, this country and moving it forward. So we can start with you, Rhoda, and then we'll end with Rhoda. Thank you so much, Joanne, for holding this conversation. And thank you to the organizers, Nyamuka Africa. And thank you for each, to each one of you for coming and sharing all of this insight. My final take is basically to just give some advice to the innovators in the room. I know it's hard. It's always hard for innovators. It's always hard for entrepreneurs. We are here to support you as ecosystem providers and enablers. So if you ever need any advice, um, 
hold on and hang on to a fellow entrepreneur one of the most interesting things that and you can speak to me afterwards that i want to start is a founders circle where founders can come together and say hey what are you doing how can i help you what did you what was your win last week who do you know who i can connect you to just a networking session basically and i'm going to call it founders circle i used to do this at bongo hive but i'm planning to bring that here so we can definitely have those conversations to build each other because entrepreneurship is hard and we need to support one another thank you Well, um, I would firstly like to thank Stephen. I think he's one of my biggest cheerleaders. He sees so many things in me that I don't even see in myself. So <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, thank you to the ladies. Uh, it was really nice meeting you. I think I'm going to steal your mentor. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and to the Mulimi people in the audience, I love you guys. You are so cool. But then my advice to you, I think, what I would like to share is be kind and gentle to yourself. Entrepreneurship is a process. You are a human being before you are an entrepreneur. Take breaks. Take some time off. You need to breathe. You need to survive. You need to be healthy. And if you are not healthy, your business will not be healthy. So be very intentional with what you do. Your business is your life. I dream Mulimi, I sleep Mulimi, I'm always posting Mulimi. I know people that view my status are always irritated because I'll be zero for posting on my status because it's who I am. The first thing I should probably be praying for my husband, but <laughs> the first thing I pray for is my business. Well, he's connected to it because it's who I am. It's part of the person. It defines me as a person. So please be gentle. It's a process. Whatever is meant to be yours will align with you. If it's not meant to be yours, let it be. Something is coming your way, maybe even bigger. It might take longer than you want it to take. You want it to be very to happen in the now. We all do because we all want to be able to see what we started to grow, to become something big. We want to be able to give it to our children. Take, take time. Be gentle. Just be gentle. That is what I want to say. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, amazing host. Um, but I just can't get over the rich resource in this room, right? And I think a lot of the such, such rich perspectives coming out of um, the audience and even the participants, right? Even very important questions, because sometimes all you need is the right question. And, I, and, and I'm taking away like this one very important question that came out of this room really for my next level. Um, but I really just want to say to us, I think that um, in, in our lifetime, we're going to come across so many different crises, um, economic, um, cultural crises, climate crises, we'll have a pandemic. But one crisis that we mustn't overlook that is very prevalent in our times is an identity crisis. And so identity is going to be very, very key for both the men and the women here is that you're going to have to remember who you are and take it from the level of um, what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a woman? And how, how can you unlock? Um, because empowerment is about releasing power so that everything you have manifests. And get curious about yourself as a woman. Don't look at a limitation being that I'm such a great mom, but how can you take the expression of motherhood and allow it to take or to evolve into a corporate space, you know? How does, what does nurturing look like um, at a global level if you participate or wherever you participate? So number one, I really just want you to say, get to know who you are, um, uh, but also even in terms of as individuals, so we are women sitting here, but really like, who am I really? Like, who is Gladys at the core? And, um, and then the second thing is, preserve that identity because we're in such a contaminated age there's so much that's fighting against who you are so you want to be very intentional listen we put money in banks you know what i mean like we put our assets in 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 secure vaults so why would we leave um, aspects of ourselves exposed and think that they will not be contaminated so ask yourself what am i doing to preserve the value of me you know like um, my late husband used to say, no one can do you like you, babe. That, that's how I raised it. Babe, no one can do you like you, right? Um, and then number three, invest in that identity. Remember, you are evolving. 
um, who you know yourself to be, there are so many more dimensions of yourself. You haven't even really come to know who you are. I, I was doing pastoral work and, and the work that I was doing in, you know, in mentorship and it, it, it is now working at policy level. I'm able to sit at policy um, um, tables, decision-making tables, using that very same ingredient. But you know what? It doesn't just happen. You need to invest in it. Don't be afraid to invest in that gift. I like what you said about, like, you know, we, we, we are so equipped. We are so rich. Like, trust in, like, trust, like, be your own advisor. I, I like to ask my mentees, what would you tell yourself? You know, and they come up with such rich perspectives. But please don't abandon mentorship. It's just an easier way to do things, right? If you come across a mentor, um, feed your potential and, and allow yourself to grow. And then finally, um, so finally, what's the final one, Dashi? Apply it, right? Number four, apply, apply your identity. Please give us the gift of you. If you sit back, where will we find another you? We need you. Please apply yourself to this world. You are a relevant piece insignificance is a lie you matter i need you i feel like that deserves a bigger applause seriously <laughs> so thank you all we have come to the end of the first ever um in-person startup converse session and it has been absolutely amazing you have been absolutely amazing, and definitely you've been absolutely amazing. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so thank you so much. Like I said earlier, this will be a monthly event. We'll continue to have different conversations around startups, around ecosystems, around how we can continue to help and support each other, how we can continue to exchange ideas. And at this point, I think I'd just love to thank the people who have brought us all here. Um, Nyamuka Africa Solutions, you guys have been amazing. This is an awesome idea. I think we can clap. Thank you so much. So Nyamuka Africa is here. We also like to thank Zanako, who are hosting us today at the Innovation Lab. Thank you, thank you so much. And of course, our partners who are filming, um, Film 5 Studios, thank you so much, you guys. We really appreciate what you're doing. And thank you to the audience for your time, for your patience, for your participation, and really for everything that you have done for us here today. We, we really appreciate you. We hope that you spread the word, and uh, we're looking forward to the next session. Thank you so much, you guys. Okay, so hello, Zindaba from Mulimi here. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I learned a lot. I've networked with a lot of women. A lot of men also came through to support us. So it's really nice. I hope that we can have more and more of these conversations to help SMEs, startups grow and develop their businesses. Looking forward to come and support the next speakers. Thank you very much. Absolutely amazing session that we had. I am super proud to have been a part of it. And I feel that this is something that will benefit not just the people that participated here today, but every woman, man, and everybody who get a chance to watch this. It's something that is impactful and will benefit everyone who has a listening ear. Um, I was really blown away by the participation from the participants and the audience. Everybody just weighed in on everything. And it was absolutely amazing. Amazing. I'm really looking forward to the next session. Hi, my name is Susan Kapia Katebe and I am the founder of Zalu Plus. Being here has been a very great opportunity for me as a co-founder, I mean as a founder of Zalu Plus. Okay, it has been something that has helped uh, to uh, make me realize who I am and what it is I need to achieve as an entrepreneur. 
Ali has also, I have a problem with uh, uh, public speaking. So with this uh, conversation that we had today, has helped to bring out who I am really and what that I can put in for my business as well. So thank you so much, Nemuka Africa and Zanako. Hello, my name is Nomsa. I'm an innovation consultant and I am also the founder of TNE Technologies, which is a mobility startup um, where we will be doing mobile ticketing for people who use intercity transport. Um, my experience of today's startup converse was really exciting. I loved it. Um, it was really great to get into the room with different people, different women and men as well, and just learn from them. We touched on different subjects like mentorship, um, even systems and even just getting to know yourself as a startup founder and I think just learning from like Dr. Gladys, learning from even um, Rhoda and um and even Zindaba, they had a lot to say, they had a lot to, to give and a lot, and we learned so much and I think we should always have these types of conversations because I think they're important especially for us as women um, and startup founders. Hi. Built by her, Startup Converse was an amazing event. There was a rich uh, audience which brought so much insight. I basically didn't feel like a panelist because the, the, the audience had so much insight to bring to the conversation. It's been such a great experience with many lessons to learn from mentorship all the way up to innovation and entrepreneurship and all of these small details that startups need to know about in order for them to succeed. Thank you so much to the organizers.